All right, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, kinship. And kinship is one element out of the five that I have as part of the cultural animation theory that I've come up with. And um, so the, the, all, all five elements um, include kinship, custodianship, totemism, song and dance, and last but not least, sacredness. Um, all these elements uh, I've found have been featured in a, a lot of indigenous animations that you know I've come across in research. And I've also put elements of that into my own animations. Now, the one thing that, well, you know, the first is, is kinship. So what do we mean by kinship? Kinship is usually um, related to family lines, bloodlines, um, or like with the Australian Aborigines, song lines. It's usually this common characteristic shared amongst peoples. So, you know, I, I like to call people that I have, you know, even in my team business-wise, um, my kin. Because, you know, we, we, we share something and we work towards it and it, it gives us this sort of groundedness. And I think elements of that um, help uh, cult, like animations. So these indigenous elements help animation and then animation itself lends itself to the indigenous stories through these elements. So with kinship, um, we, we look at pretty much all the, the indigenous animations that, that share this. So if you're, you're looking to create an animation for your own indigenous culture um, in, in your own lands, then take a look at the, the kinship type of stories. These stories will have deep resonance for future generations. Why? Because, for example, I'm a mixed third culture kid. So I, you know, both my parents have different backgrounds. Uh, one's Polynesian, the other one's uh, Fijian Indian, and I've also been brought up in in different countries around the world. Now, I had a lot of identity um, issues growing up. There was a period where I just couldn't fathom that I was part Indian because it just wasn't cool. So I rejected the Indian side of me. As I grew and matured, um, I embraced it more because I had to learn more about myself. Um, in order to form my identity. So it was almost like, you know, I had to break apart uh, every aspect of me um, through the storylines, uh, through the bloodlines, and, you know, seek out the, the, the myths, the legends as well. Um, that's what I was really drawn to, uh, of, of the different aspects of my cultures. And by doing that, it then formulated a better identity for myself, and allowed me to relate to other people because I found similarities between the cultures. And, you know, I always tried tying myself down to just one, uh, one culture, one country. And it was actually reflected in my yearbooks because, like, every year I'd have, like, you know, one year be like I was from Australia, the other year would be from Fiji, the other year, um, you know, it, it just kept changing because I was trying to find myself. So now, though, um, I pretty much like calling myself a global citizen like and a true one you know not just because uh, it's 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 fancy but because that's how I feel wherever I go I seem to always be able to relate to people um, because growing up you know we just had to uh, you know I, I lived in a weird place but you know that's another story so going back to kinship if you're looking to create, to create an, an indigenous animation um, try to look for uh, kinship aspects where they talk about family lines or bloodlines and the importance of it, passing it down, um, what lessons have been passed down, what lessons um, you know you, you can take, and and what aspects of the culture you can uh, leave aside, because you know that's something also that we struggle with um, for people who do have more of a culture uh, in terms of the indigenous side, that uh, sometimes it feels like it ties ties you down or ties us down, and. If you look at the good things, take it, learn from it, but don't be afraid to let go of the things that are no longer serving you or your people, because that's the worst thing um, in terms of change, right? Change is the only constant in life, so you're always going to have to adapt. And I bet you, if you look into your own stories, you will see if you keep digging further and further, you will find that a lot of the things that your indigenous culture preaches now may not always be um, the same thing that they did 1,000, 2,000 years ago. Um, for example, uh, Tuvalu, my maternal homeland, they, uh, a lot of Polynesians are known for their hula dancing. Um, if you don't know what that is, look up hula, um, H-U-L-A, uh, it's also known as tamura. But that sort of dancing was uh, 
slowly phased out into Walloon culture by the Christian missionaries. And that happened because the Christian missionaries thought it was too provocative. Um, and, uh, you know, you could say that the West, the Westerners didn't have enough self-control um, or didn't know how to express their own sexuality, so that they deemed that, uh, you know, too provocative. But the Tuvaluans then had to tone down the, the dancing styles and, you know, the, the dance ended up becoming a lot more mellow, um, still engaging and still fun, but it, it just was very different from the, you know, the Samoans, the Hawaiians, um, the Tongans, the Maoris, where they're a bit more expressive. Um, and you can say, I don't know whether you can say it's their fault or not, but yeah, that's what happened. So, yep, exercise, go out, find uh, indigenous stories in, in your own cultures that have uh, kinship aspects and I'll speak to you next time about the other elements of cultural animation